Welcome to Ann Arbor Democracy, a place for conversation about how our local leaders are elected and how political decisions are made, what this looked like in the past and what it looks like now. This project aims to explore the recent history and current reality of Ann Arbor Democracy. This is part two of an interview with Ed Pear, who served as the city attorney for Ann Arbor from 1973 to 1975. In 1973, a new Republican mayor and majority was elected to Ann Arbor city government. Mayor James Stevenson and his majority hired Ed Pear as a new city attorney to replace Jerry Lax. Ed served as city attorney until the election of Democratic Mayor Al Wheeler in 1975. In part one, Ed talks about the circumstances of when he was hired and various protests that occurred at city council meetings. In part two, we talk more about the issues that came before council and the contested election of 1975. But Jerry and, and uh, council was always questioning the rulings of the city attorney, you know, that, uh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Are you sure about that? And he was always challenging Robert's rules of order, you know, and he always, you know, is this a constitutional issue or is it Robert's rule of order say they can do that? I mean, I had the book there and uh, uh, I, you know, had some knowledge of it, not a lot. Uh, I did have the advantage of directly across from me sat Bill Colburn, who taught a speech in, uh, at the U of M and uh, was a fairly knowledgeable person in Robert's Rule of Order. And many times would uh, I could look to him and get a signal of what was the correct answer. <laughs> so I would have to give uh, Bill some credit on that. Well, so what did you observe as the primary points of contention between the Democrats and the Republicans in that era? Well, you know, the Democrats had had young council people there, at least seemed to me. And so they were, they were close with the HRP. Again, you know, when you're is again seemed to me when you're the minority party you can do a lot of things uh that you don't have to maybe be so responsible for because it's not going to pass you know and you well, can well sometimes you can you're trying what, to make them and, pass and it's yeah, frustrating no, no, right 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 and you know you can do what you truly believe in and uh so no i uh, Again, Republicans having a, ha a heavy majority pretty much could pass the things they want. But um, I always thought, and I know the mayor on, on many occasions, uh, when they would ask for a legal, a legal opinion, one, I uh, was never asked to give opinion for a certain thing to come out the way they wanted. All, and I remember Jim Stevenson on the marijuana when they passed the charter amendment, you know, we gave a legal opinion, you know, basically it was valid and enforceable and all that. And, I, you know, when I took it and gave it to him and I said, you know, this might not be the opinion that the council wants to see. And he said, no, no, what we want, what is the law, what, then we can deal with it. It's our job to deal with it, not yours. So I, I always felt comfortable that, that you know, that they weren't looking for a specific opinion, but, you know, do the best I could to give them the right opinion. And I and I I think I did by and large I you know and uh, uh, I, had, I had a good group of uh, you know uh, assistant uh, attorneys in the city attorney's office and uh, I think they did a good job when we asked them to help on research things. Are any of them still around? Well, Bruce Laidlaw was the chief assistant. He oh, I, okay. he's I mean he's still around. He's, yeah. And then and later he became city attorney. And then the guy John Van Loon. Uh, he, he did all our, like, ordinance violation cases, you know, and Mal Muskovitz, who's a local attorney, a labor lawyer, he, I, I hired Mal when we needed a labor lawyer, he, he was hired, and the fourth attorney was Jim Flory, and my understanding is, I believe he left the law and went into teaching, so, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's still in the area or not, but, uh, uh, as I say, they all were they were all good, and two of them were longtime city attorneys. They'd worked, you know, Jerry Lax had hired them, and so they they had the historical background and a lot of the knowledge of you know stuff that had happened before. 
I'm interested in talking about the election of 75, the preferential voting election, um, because there was a lot that came before to make that happen. So maybe you can talk me through that. Besides the the uh, pot law, which is a charter amendment, they also in the next in the I think seventy four election got a charter amendment to uh, provide for preferential voting, which basically was if no candidate if there was more than two candidates and if no candidate got fifty percent of the vote, then the the third candidate if there were three candidates uh, would drop off and where that person's second place votes were. So you'd elect your first choice and then your second choice. So if the person came in third, uh, who was his or her third place votes? So in the 75 election, uh, basically, Jim Stevenson, who was the incumbent mayor, got something like 49.5 or 6 percent of the vote or 48 point something. Uh, Al Wheeler, who was a Democratic candidate, got like 49.3 or 2 percent. He was 2 or 3 percent behind Jim Stevenson in the total vote, but neither one had 50 percent. And then Carol Ernst. Uh, ran as a third party human rights uh, candidate and would have got, you know, two or three percent or whatever that difference was. So then they looked at who her second, the people that voted for her, who were her second choice is, and most all of them were then Democrats. If she couldn't win, they voted the Democrat. So it ends up that Al Wheeler gets with that 50 point something and Jim Stevenson would be 49.9 or something. So Al Wheeler won that ballot. Now that went to court. They went through the courts, you know, uh, fighting all that. And then that uh, ended up the court, the court approved preferential, I mean, approved the, the election and Al Wheeler was installed then as the mayor. And again, the election was probably in April and that all that stuff didn't get settled to probably June, the end of May or June. When when the charter amendment passed, again, they, at what what was the city attorney's legal opinion on it? And I remember we, uh, you know, opined that uh, it was it was probably valid. In fact, we, I think I'd found a a a, a head note or a, a footnote. I'm sorry, in a U.S. Supreme Court decision, the election case a few years earlier, where the Supreme Court said something, well, this isn't like preferential voting when you do this, this, and this. So whatever that case was, was distinguished from a preferential voting. So I think, our, as I recall, our opinion was that it, it was valid uh, to have preferential voting. And, uh, you know, the U.S. Supreme Court had even mentioned it. Uh, now, subsequent to that election, then the, the, you know, they voted to repeal the uh, the. Uh, uh, charter amendment to allow preferential voting. Now, I, I found an article, and it wasn't entirely clear to me what exactly, or how it, how it resolved, I guess. Carol Ernst's candidacy was challenged. They are, somebody argued that she didn't technically live in the city, that she was living on Maple instead of on I forget what the other address was. Right, I, I you know, if I remember that, and I don't even remember how it ended. But she, she was, she was in the election. That, that case was brought after the election. I think the argument of that was, if the court said she shouldn't have been able to run, then her votes, then her count. votes wouldn't have counted, and uh, Mayor Stevenson would have, you know, would have, well, would have won. Or, well, and there was an article I found where Carol Ernst, like the police were investigating Carol Ernst. Um, it turned quite serious. Yeah. Carol worked for the, as I remember, for the AATA. I believe she was a bus driver. And I thought she ran for council maybe before, but she was, you know, she was active in politics with the HRP. And I mean, I knew Carol. She was, you know, always very, very friendly and, uh, you know, nice. But, uh, but I, uh, again, I think the, the argument over her being uh, a resident of the city or not was after the election, not, you know, not before the election. But uh, but yeah, that, no, that changed things. As I say, then Al Wheeler uh, became the mayor, and uh, uh, in fact, although I was a city attorney appointed by Jim Stevenson, uh, uh, Mayor Wheeler 
asked me if I would stay on, and uh, I, had, uh, I had told them that, you know, I had never planned to stay in the city attorney's office long. I, I was in private practice. It's real hard to then, you know, kind of step out of private practice and, do, you know, do uh, municipal work if you weren't going to do that full time because you didn't want to be out five or eight or ten years and then have to go back into private practice. So that, you know, it just seemed to me it was a good time to to leave. And I, 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 I think my decision would have probably been the same if Jim Stevenson had won mayor, yeah. won the mayor that, uh, you know, that two years, uh, is there. I really enjoyed the time and it was, it was interesting. I mean, stuff I never had even thought of before happened. Those are, di you know, dynamic years in the city. It was the end of the anti-war protest stuff. It was the beginning of, you know, the human rights, uh, arguments, you know, they had, resolutions to have gay pride week. I, I found a funny quote from Stevenson when the marijuana ordinance was repealed, um, the meeting where they threw the pie, mm -hmm. where he, he Steven, Mayor Stevenson said that pot dealers are a social blight and must be put out of business. What would he think of what our town looks like now? I mean, it's it's so interesting how our norms have changed so drastically. Well, you know, right right here now. When I started practicing law, we, there was one, you know, the circuit judge was Judge Brakey, and you couldn't have any gambling in the town, you know, and here you got people selling lottery tickets in the county building now. So, I mean, it's a whole different whole different life. But, but Jim Stevenson was a, he was not a... Uh, way out guy. He was a very practical, I think a very, you know, he's a very good attorney, but he, uh, um, you know, he, he, I thought, I thought he was relatively moderate and very, uh, reasonable in most of his stuff, but he was, a, he was a good speaker. Now you've mentioned a couple of people now who were attorneys. So how uh, the configuration of counsel, so I'm looking, I have in front of me, the right. people from 73, the people from 74, how many attorneys were among them? Bob Henry was an attorney. Norris Thomas was an attorney. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then, uh, after that, well, and Jack McCormick, Jack McCormick was an attorney. And, and Stevenson, was, Stevenson an attorney. was an attorney. was an attorney. And, and one of the comments I remember making, and then I believe 74, 75 election, Ed Hood got elected. He was an attorney. And although there were all these attorneys on, on council, uh, I don't recall any time where any of them questioned anything I said as the city attorney. We're saying, well, you're wrong. This is the law. I mean, they, uh, you know, I think they all uh, were very good about that. Or I assume if they had any questions, they would have come and seen me, you know, individually. But none of them tried to act like an attorney at council, is what I'm trying to say. You know, they so that's were. That's kind of remarkable considering that you didn't have municipal law experience. Well, uh, you gain it very quickly. You, you know, I mean, you, you know, uh, uh, when I said, you know, I had not been a, a council to a, uh, the attorney to a city council, but I mean, you know, I'd done zoning cases. I'd been in front of the zoning board of appeals for clients. I'd done, I'd been in court on things, you know, I, so, you know, and most, uh, uh, matters that council deals with, um, you know, the right answer is probably what is reasonable and practical, not some way out crazy idea. So, you know, if you have any common sense, I think you can pretty much answer most questions. So in, so in your memory, what were the, what, what were some of the bigger controversies that, that that happened when you were a city attorney. It was a relatively short period well, of time, but right. so much was happening. Right. The anti-war stuff was still going on, the Vietnam War, you know, uh, protests and that. And then um, zoning would always be an issue. You know, everybody is for projects except if they're in your neighborhood. So you always had uh, matters that Packard Platt was a big uh, was a big lawsuit. Briarwood was opening at that time. In fact, one of the big things when Briarwood was opened, uh, they there was a big tree on State Street which was only a two-lane road at that time and they wanted to condemn a part of it so they could make you know a four lane road to go out there and needless to say the downtown merchants were not anything in favor of briarwood and jack mccormick the councilman um, would not vote 
to condemn the property and they needed his vote because they you need eight votes for real estate matters on city council and they didn't have the eight votes they only had seven without him and the hrp and the dems wouldn't do it so that came up several weeks till they finally i think he finally relented and they uh, got the eighth vote so they could condemn it so they could get this dangerous tree that people were running into you know and so that's how they uh, widened state street now, remember, Briarwood isn't like it is now. It was like out in the country. Yeah, I had a conversation with someone last summer who told me this, that she remembered when they were building Briarwood and, and how far away it seemed. Yeah, no, it, it, as I say, you know, now it, it's totally different. But no, they had a hard time and, you know, then get uh, all the zoning around it, you know, as the land started developing. But zonings were always were always uh, contentious issues. Uh, Ann Arbor also is one of the first cities that passed the sign ordinance. Uh, and that was really the, the council before me, Bob Harrison, that passed it, but it was actually the case got up to the Supreme Court when I when I was city attorney, but I got approval. We hired Jerry Lax to argue that case because he had done all the work in the lower court and he, he handled that case at the Supreme Court level, which the city won. You know, we were one of the first cities, you know, don't have billboards all over and big signs, you know. I think the sign ordinance was amended in the last 10 years yeah. yet again. But that was one of the, at the time, that was one of the first, I think one of the first cities that had, a, you know, such a restrictive ordinance. I mean, you know, the other thing I remember we had a, we passed the uh, fluorocarbon law where, you know, the spray, the spray cans, you know, the spray Oh, stuff. aerosol cans? Aerosol cans. And that was, I think that just before I left, I remember council passed the, the ban on those. So, and I read to be one of the first cities on, on that cable tv came in you know came i think um, in the late the early 60s and you still had issues with cable tv and whether they could run their lines on the utility lines you know in the backyards so there i mean interesting cases uh that happened uh, i'm trying to think a couple we went uh went to the michigan supreme court on we had a couple cases went to the u.s supreme court on uh just stuff you normally wouldn't do in the day-to-day -day law practice. Going to the Planning Commission, that's where the big fights would be, you know, and they'd ask for a traffic impact study, and you'd bring this study. And uh, so there was a lot, uh, a lot going on uh, that, uh, you know, almost every project, if it was large, the neighbors would fight it, you know, and some they'd win and some they didn't. And, um, you know, you had the regular, you know, the drunk driving, the ordinance violation, dogs, dogs running loose. You know, now everything's on a leash, but then, you know, dogs were running loose. I mean, dog bite cases, I remember people, they'd bring their dog up to city council there, to the city attorney's office so we could see the dog was not mean. So why are we giving it a ticket? <laughs> uh, so we wow. did that on a regular day. And uh, say, I think, uh, uh, Certainly drugs, you know, now, I mean, you know, now on every corner, there's a place that sells marijuana, you know, then that was really a, that was a big deal. Yeah. You know, the whole, the whole drug thing has changed. Uh, noise, we had noise because there used to be concerts down in the park at uh, West Park and at, over at on Gallup and, you know, they allowed bands and neighbors complain the, too loud. So yeah, it's a good, police would go out there and measure the decibels and either ticket them or tell them to quiet down. In part three, we talk more about how city council functioned, a controversial McDonald's downtown, and Ed's transition back into private law practice. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be alerted to more content like this.